so what we'll be doing is we'll be essentially doing uh, we'll be making a mixture model out of a single language model okay so so basically missing words should not have zero probability in those cases or for all the cases we will be basically smoothing with the collection probability or collection language model and mixture model is basically document model plus collection model it is called the mixture model and how are we going to combine them we'll be combining them there are multiple ways of combining them one of the easiest way is to use a linear smoothing technique so this is the thing that we are computing earlier probability of the generation of the u given d and this is essentially probability of q given c now <clears throat> how pictorially we can discuss this how we can represent this let's say this is the document and let's say this is the query now i am observing the term t what i will be doing is i'll be looking at the generation probability of the term from the document and i'll be computing the generation probability of the term from the collection so i'll be considering it's let's say x and y these are probably two probabilities or let's say p1 and p2 and i'll be combining them somehow one way is using this linear smoothing technique formally which is called jelinek mercer smoothing technique <coughs> so here they are being combined with a parameter here it is specified as lambda lambda into probability of the term from the document model plus 1 minus lambda into probability of the term from the collection model okay so basically if the so this is essentially the term frequency of the term in the document given the document length now if this is zero that is if the term is unseen we will be considering only this p2 which is basically in general how likely that the term will be observed from the collection okay so this is called collection language model or also called background language model why background because considering a doc a collection having say 100 100 maybe 100000 document 100000 document we are computing the collection language model against one document so from one document it is 1 is to 100000 you can consider it's the entire background so that's why it is called the background background language model so <clears throat> probability of q given mc is probability here it is t basically probability of the query word q in the collection language model uh when the collection is c now here lambda is the again a probability which controls the weight that we want to provide on individually these two note that the lambda the value of lambda will be set somewhere between 0 and 1 if we set lambda equals to 0 that means probability of 
t given d is equals to probability of t given c isn't it or in other word probability of t given mc which means the term generation probability will be entirely computed on the basis of the collection probability or collection language model or the background language model if we set lambda equals to 1 the probability will be probability of probability of t given sorry probability of t given d will be computed based on probability of t given so lambda equals to 1 this part will be cancelled will be based on entirely on the document uh, the document generation model or the document language model so this is where we started with so this these two are two extreme values lambda equals to 1 means there is no smoothing that is we are only considering the document itself any unseen word will be given a zero probability as earlier we'll still be getting that error and if we set lambda equals to zero that means we are not actually considering the considering the document itself which is again erroneous so we want to compute how likely that the term will be generated from the document and we are approximating it approximating it based on how likely the term is being generated from the collection so both these two extreme cases are actually erroneous i'm mean, not erroneous but uh, i mean questionable so essentially we need to set the value of lambda x to some value in between 0 and 1 but excluding 0 and 1 we started with this but we should be doing something like this this is basically indicating lambda will be set to a value excluding 0 and 1 <clears throat> so if we set lambda equals to 0.5 it will be basically giving equal weightage to the chance to the to the generation probability of the term from the document as well as from the collection so in this jelly neck marks are smoothing we will be seeing that for different collections the optimal performance of the retrieval model will be obtained using different values of lambda okay so in sum or more formally high value of lambda means high value will be put here low value will be put here because if it is say high value of lambda means greater than 0.5 it will be basically so let's say it's 0.6 it will be say, 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 say 0.6 here and 0.4 here so it is basically tend to retrieve documents containing all the query terms because it is basically excluding or reducing the effect from the generation of the query term from the collection and low value of lambda which is basically say less than 0.5 so let's say it is say 0.2 in, in which case it will be 0.8 it is basically called a disjunctive search where it's suitable for long queries for long query the number of query terms will be significantly higher let's say k will be around say 8 to 10 terms in that case it might be the situation that some of these query terms will not be present in the document because the query is quite long in that case you should be using or we should be setting low value of lambda and uh, this is a very important thing we need to correctly set the lambda in order to get the optimal performance now, as i said depending on the data set in which we are performing the search the optimal value of lambda may vary for example for some document for, for some collection we might be getting the optimal result with lambda equals to 0.9 so for some collection one 
and for other some so, some other collection we might be getting the optimal result with say 0.7 it might be the case so based on the collection in which we will be searching we need to set the value of lambda accordingly let's take an example let's say the collection is containing two documents d1 and d2 d1 is jackson was one of the most talented entertainer of all times d2 is michael jackson and anointed himself king of the pop okay and the query is say uh, query q is michael jackson uh, for this query if we set the value of lambda as 0.5 i'll be requesting you to compute the score of d1 for the query q and the score of the document d2 for the query q when both of them the score will be lm jm lm jm so lm jm is basically the short form of language model with jelinek mercer smoothing so i'll be requesting you to do that at your end later on not during the class later so i'll not be showing you this uh so one thing to tell you is that following this lmjm scoring there can be some uh, limitation as well now what are this what can be a possible limitation is basically as we we can see here here this lambda is basically an independent parameter it is not dependent on any of the any any feature nothing it's just a free parameter now let's consider a document okay okay let's then discuss this with this yeah let's just do this the probability of so for this document d1 which is a long document containing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 terms 1 2 3 term uh, 4 5 6 7 7 terms okay <clears throat> so this is the collection now probability of q given d or d given q if i consider d1 which is this document it is basically probability of the term so it is basically this is basically for the term michael and this is basically for the term jackson now michael is not present in the document the first document that's why it is 0 0 by 11 plus in the collection the collection frequency of michael is 1 divided by 18 18 is the size of the collection 11 plus 7 and the <coughs> so basically this into one uh, one by two and this into one by two that's why i have put this one by two in the uh, in the outside i have taken it as uh, at the outside uh, and uh, basically you can do the same thing here as well so if we compute it will be somewhere near about 0 0.003 in the second document which is containing seven terms although it is cons i mean it is uh, containing all the query terms <coughs> here michael once i'm sorry it will be 11 1 by 11 1 by number of uh, terms in the document plus 1 by 
one is uh, again basically the collection frequency of Michael by number of terms in the collection 18 by 2 into for Jackson 1 by uh, 1 by uh, extremely sorry I think I have made a mistake here it will be for Jackson it is oh it, uh, sorry 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 extremely sorry this is for the second document it will be basically 1 by 7 not 1 by 11 1 by 7 for the first term Michael in the second document and 1 by 18 because Michael is present only once in the in the collection and 18 is the collection size divided divided by 2 into for the Jackson 1 by 7 again Jackson is 1 out of 7 plus 2 by 18 as Jackson is present twice by 2 we can see we are getting the score following this we can say that the rank of T1 right no 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 ah, yes exactly right rank of D1 is greater than D2 that means uh, basically D2 will be ranked higher than T1 but note that given this query this is also relevant the only problem is as one term which is Michael is absent in the document that's why it is being penalized now another penalization is being done if we consider so let's say the Michael term is also present here Michael Jackson was one of the most talented entertainer of all time so in that case it will be one right and still if you compute you will be seeing that for this document the score of D2 will be higher than score of T1 so it is basically if Michael is there so 1 by 11 again it will be 1 by 7 for the second document plus 1 by 18 by 2 1 by 11 plus 2 by 18 by 2 right for the second document is 1 by 7 this part is same 1 by 7 this part is same right and we know that 1 by 11 is less than 1 by 7 isn't it so in that case this will be and basically this will be uh, greater so basically this will be greater than this basically score of t2 will be greater than this so this is one limitation of this linear smooth model which is not containing anything other than this which is not considering anything other than this free parameter so there is another uh, extension of this linear smooth language model which we will be discussing in the next class tomorrow which will be considering the length of the document inside this parameter essentially what we will be doing is we will be extending this with the length of the document so we will be basically considering it as a length smooth instead of considering it as a probability we will be considering it as a parameter of the length of the document <clears throat> and we will be seeing that this will be partially addressed this problem will be partially addressed by this situation so the problem in this case was this document was given higher score because the number of time the, the, the number of terms in this document is less and the number of terms in document is basically in the denominator right as the denominator is less something by I mean e even if the term frequency is same as the denominator is small for the document 2 as you can see that the numerator was same 1 1 1 1 both of the document is containing Michael and Jackson once but as the denominator is small for the document 2 that is the number of as the document 2 is small it is being ranked at higher position so it will be addressed by the extension of this linear smooth language model.